feet. Let's honor the Lord. Honor Chip. Come on. Chip Brim. Friend, minister, hunter, coach. Come on, bring it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you for that hog welcome. It's good to be back in Arkansas. Hey, first of all, I, I, I like to just get into it, right? First of all, thank you, Nate and Evan, for letting me come. And, and uh, I know as a senior pastor now how important it is to, you just don't let anybody come up. Uh, you protect your sheep, and, and so it's an honor, and thank you so much. And we so uh, love Nate when he comes down and preaches and C for C. And, and um, so, got that out of the way. I'm kind of a history guy. Does anybody like history? Yeah. How many are, are, are kind of thankful to be an American? Yeah. Anybody thankful? Yeah. Are you thankful that we live in a land that's free and uh, we can uh, go to church and, yeah. and worship whoever we want to worship, you know, the God? And all that was because, now this is my history coming back, and I was, you know, coaching my history minor was, it was or my minor was history. Uh, they found out years after the revolution that the reason why the Revolutionary War was won was because of a group of people, a small group of people. Most scholars uh, and historians agree to this, that because George Washington had spies, has anybody heard about that? There's, there's uh, movies. But he had unknown, like a cabbage farmer, and he had a, and he had a bartender, and he had a somebody who worked in the press, and all these people, and they weren't even known, even in, in, in you know, the upper upper echelon of, of people in, in the government. And so, not until years later, and they found the journals, and they found the facts, and if he hadn't have had these people, we wouldn't have won the war. We wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been revolutionized, right? We wouldn't have been separated. We wouldn't have had our country. So, George had people. George had people. Now, <clears throat> Over a year ago, or, well, uh, it was uh, a uh, several months before the pandemic. Several months. So God knows what's going to come. The Lord, Nate calls me and says, Chip, would you come and speak at this mayor's uh, luncheon we're having? And uh, I wanted to, but I was in Leavenworth, Kansas. And I couldn't, and I wanted to. And he said, okay. I said, Nate, you'll be great. He knew it. I'll do it, yeah. I said, man, I wish I could. So I hang up the phone. And I'm walking back. So I hang up the phone. And, and I take about three steps. And the Lord says, call him back and you say, say you're coming. And it was one of those, you don't even talk about it. You know what I'm talking about? It's one of those urges that you don't even, but, I, but God. I, no, 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 none of that. I call him back. And, I, and he goes, hey, hey, yeah, just talk, yeah, hey. <laughs> Remember? I said, I'm coming. Oh, thought you couldn't. No, I know. <laughs> but I'll be there. How? Doesn't matter. <laughs> so I go to Leavenworth, and I'm supposed to be in Alma. And, um, and it happens. It just happens. God made a way. I stop by and pick up Candace, and, and we come here, and he had the tables all out, and and it was kind of a, su a surprise of who was all here. Yeah. I mean, there were mayors, right, yeah. from everywhere. Yeah. And it was good. And I got up and told a few Razorback stories, you know. <laughs> and, uh, Lord, what, I'm sitting there eating the sandwich, which was good. <laughs> it was all good. Why did you have me here? Why was it so essential? that I And, and Candy got up and prayed. It was good. Guy got up, one of the mayors, I think he was the mayor of here, and he got up and talked. It was good. And it's just about over. Well, why did I have to be down here? Which, I'm, I'm glad to be here. But I thought, you know, something powerful would happen. <laughs> A miracle or something. And Nate gets up and said, I think he said it like this, the Lord gave me this either the, the night before or that morning. And I'm just supposed to read this, this verse to you. 
out of this particular translation. And when he read it, the Lord said to me, that's why I have you here. For one verse. I wanted you to hear one verse. And it was right here. Through that man. And since then, God has been able to, we have now put it, I've I, I preached it on uh, Brother Copeland's network through Mom's uh, show. And uh, to millions and millions of people. And it is just eye-opening. And he said this, and it's Acts 18, 9, and 10 in the NIV. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, do not be afraid. Now, that gives me, that helps me. Because Paul was afraid. Hello? Paul, snake bit, shipwreck, in prison, Mr. Hero, right? Well, he, he was afraid. God wouldn't have said that if he wasn't afraid. Keep on speaking, and then interesting. And don't be silent. This is before the pandemic and the COVID and everything, right? And, and it's in this room, and I've been sharing this all everywhere. And then it says, click. Y'all didn't see it, did you? See, it gets, it's in a chip. No, I'm just kidding. For I, for I am with you. For I am with you. That ought to have been enough. I mean, it's a vision. And no one's going to attack or harm you. Now, notice, we're months before this virus. No one's going to attack and harm. That's what fear is, is spreading throughout the world, attack and a harm and harm. Because, and he could, now think about what God could have said, the millions of things he could have said. Because I will send angels. I have the Holy Spirit. I will, I will, I will. No, because I have many people in this city. And when I heard that, I was sitting about right there. I mean, it was like a bomb went off. Because I have people. George had people. And it turned the momentum of the war. Because he had people. People that we didn't even know about. Others didn't even know about. But it turned the war. It turned the freedom of our country while we're here today in 2020 worshiping God freely in a church. In Alma, Arkansas. God's got people. So I'm driving home from Alma. God, who are these people? I'm sure I, hopefully I am. And then the, it came out of me, do you need, somebody say need. need. Do you need people? And I thought, well, I got home and I, first thing I did is Google, does God need people? Don't do that. <laughs> Oh, wow. We talk about a can of worms. <laughs> there was so much debate on that. God is sovereign. He can do anything and ain't harm. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm hearing it. <laughs> but if you dig in more, and you know the truths that we know, along with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, you find out in his sovereignty, in his sovereignty, he chose. Come on, this is it. In his sovereignty, he chose a plan. And he's a covenant God to that plan. And in that plan are a people. And in that people, he needs them. God needs people. Period. He told Brother Hagin one time, I'm not holding Richard Nixon responsible for Watergate. I'm holding the church responsible for Watergate. Now, in that scripture, the reason why harm and attack didn't come is because I've got people. Paul could have said, who? You don't know them. Don't worry about it. Some of them are from Alma, Arkansas. But, but here's the thing. That shows me that people have responsibility. Are y'all with me? And people have a part 
to stop harm and attack. We can stop it out of our schools. We can stop it out of our towns. Does God, pe- does God have people in Alma, Arkansas? That's all I want to know. Yes. Amen. Well, who are these people? And what are these people? What are we supposed to do? And so when this thing happens, I'm saying, Lord, what about the plan? You still have a plan. This thing hits. What are we to do? And I, I said, God, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to teach a message that we don't need and all of them can be good and we can as pastors can get in there and it's good i want what we need i only want what we need and so i he said be more sensitive i said okay i'm going to practice my sensitivity how many know that we could all we should all pray to be more sensitive to god not just pastors not just ministers but i heard brother hagan or read brother hagan where he said some pastors are more sensitive than others and I went, oh, I wonder which one I am. I want to be the sensitive one. So now I'm going to show something. Now I see a lot of young people in here. You got to practice sensitivity. One thing we know to do is you say you're more sensitive. You have what you say. I am more. And y'all are witnessing the most sensitive day of my life to God today. Y'all are witnessing it. I'm more sensitive today to the Lord and his leading and his voice and the Holy Spirit than I have ever been in my life. Why? Because I'm saying it every day. Yesterday was a record breaker, but today (laughs) was the best, and y'all are here. Tomorrow will even be better. Amen? So I say it. I wake up. I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive to the Lord. I'm sensitive to him. And I think we all should do that. And in this sensitivity training, such as... You know what we do now? If we don't know something, we Google it, right? Yep. Have you ever had a conversation? Who was that actress that played that part? You know, he, he, she dated Brad Pitt. You know, remember that? And then what will we do? Have it right then. Z- zero, zero sensitivity or being led. Are you with me? Yeah. Just dulling all the brain. I mean, just, yeah. just there it is. There it is. And so I stopped doing that. And so, oh, who was that baseball? Remember, he hit 100 home runs and that. Ah, oh, yeah. And, and, of course, I'd go right, and I'd go, uh-uh. Holy, I said, I'm sensitive, and the Holy Spirit will tell me his name. Yeah. And I'd practice that. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. What, what makes you feel like we don't have to practice this? Yeah. We just feel like we're automatically, oh, I pray, Lord, I want to be more sensitive. <laughs> practice yeah. these things. Practice that. Pra- you lose your keys. You lose your phone. You lose your wallet or you misplace it. No. I'm going to practice it. Instead of going nuts and tearing the house up, Lord, I'm sensitive and you know right where it's at. Amen. So in my sensitivity practicing, the Lord said, I want you to preach my sermons during this time, during this pandemic. Preach my sermon." I thought they all were. <laughs> but that's how he said it. I, I just want y'all, I'm, I'm just being real. And I said, okay, that's what I heard. And I just kind of was thinking and studying about God's plan that he had for us and what he wanted his people to do during this time. And uh, all of a sudden, in my sensitivity, I, I'm in my office and I see this little book. And, the, and I, I sense the Lord say, read that book and preach that Preach my sermon. Preach my sermon. So I pick up the book. <clears throat> what I had been meditating on prior to this was it was like God's plan for your life was like this. There's a train right out there in the parking lot. Big train. And there's a track. And it leads to everything you need. And that track's already been laid train's already been built everything's waiting on you all you need to do is just get on the train just get on the train everything's been laid it could be your healing it can be your finances it could be God's plan for your life whatever it is is on that track and on that train you just got to get on it so I was just kind of seeing that going guys the track's been laid the train's there we just got to get all aboard you know I'm just thinking this right 
And so he says, read this book. And I read the, I pick up the book, the little book, little mini book, Brother Hagin. And it says, how to write your own ticket. <laughs> so all of a sudden, have y'all put it together? You need a ticket to get on this train to whatever your plan, what God has for you to do. Everything God has for you, you got to, man, you need to get into Psalm 139, 116, where it talks about he has a book and all destiny has been written out. Everybody who is a believer, their plan has already been written out. How many want that plan? And it's a good plan. But there's something to it. You need to write your own ticket. So God said to me, I have, I have need of my people during this time pandemic to write their own ticket so that the world can see and the world can believe in me but they must write their own ticket so I'm reading this and it's about brother uh, Hagen having this uh, vision with Jesus and and right before Jesus leaves the vision brother Hagen says Jesus I've been preaching on the woman with the issue of blood. Am I, I feel like I'm missing something. Am I? He said, yes, you are. Now, he said, now, this is what Jesus said. Get a piece of paper and write down one, two, three, and four. That's what Jesus said to Brother Hagin. Now, I don't know if you know Brother Hagin, but I grew up with him. I mean, I'm talking about I'm little. Mom joins and starts Rhema with him. I've known him most of my life, and I have seen his fruits, and I have seen how he lived, and I believe when he had this vision, he had this vision. And so the Lord says, get out a piece of paper and write one, two, three, and four. Do you guys, and I'm going to tell you what that is. Do you all realize that you're not about to hear Brother Hagen's one, two, three, four cliff notes? Are y'all with me? You're not to hear mine. Who's are you about to hear? Jesus' cliff notes. His sermon. Now remember what he said to me earlier? Preach my sermons. That's what they need to hear now. And so he said, get out a piece of paper, write one, two, three, four. This is how everybody, everybody writes their ticket. And this is what they need to do. Because we need to arise and shine. Amen? Jesus said this to him. Are y'all ready? And then we'll get into the four. If anybody, anywhere, at any time. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? Well, how do you get around that? That's, that's not you. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Anywhere, Alma. Anytime, pandemic. Now, right, at any time, <laughs> watch this. We'll take these four steps and put these principles into operation. They will always receive whatever they want from me or from, my fa from the Father. Always receive. So they put these four principles. In. He goes on to say, you can put these four steps into operation immediately and receive anything in the present tense, such as salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, healing, spiritual victory, or finances. These four things, always you will receive. Talk about an infomercial. 100% guaranteed if you order now. We will throw another one in. Could you imagine if you did this to the world? Even unbelievers would call in. Guaranteed, this is the four steps guaranteed from Jesus himself. And I'm speaking to you, world. You will receive whatever you need to receive. Amen. Woo. Well, here it comes. Is anybody inter interested? Yeah. All right. Jesus went on to say, anything the Bible promises you can receive by taking these four steps. As a matter of fact, everywhere and every time in the Bible where anybody received any story you know in the Bible, they did the four steps. Everybody who ever received anything from God at any time, then and now, did these four steps. So you're not going to be able to get around four steps. But here's the good thing. 
we get to do these four steps. Now, however, he said, some things such as financial needs and manifestations of certain healings may take time to develop because these four steps be then become principles and they need to be practiced over a period of time, such as he gave the example of a farmer planting a seed. Are y'all with me? But it will, whether it is over to be practiced over a period of time or immediately, they always will happen, he said. Jesus said, it's time to write your own ticket. All aboard! Time to write your ticket. This whole time, it's not been God. You've been waiting on God. You write your own ticket. Do you think God needs a people right now during this time, his church, his people to arise and shine? His people, their businesses, their life, their joy, their health, their families, their peace. Why? Because that is what they will see and then they'll believe that there is a God. Amen. That works a whole lot better than a track. It does. They want to see the power. Amen. All right. So Jesus said to Brother Hagen, write these down. And he said, now, you talked to me about the woman with the issue of blood. What were you missing? What was the first thing she did? Because she did it. David did it when he defeated Goliath. Everybody did these four. Maybe there's a hang-up in you on one of these four that we can get it clear. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. So he said the first thing she did, he took, her, he took him to Mark 5, 28. If she said, everybody say say. say. Now y'all been taught this. You know this. If you, she said if I touch, or when I touch the hem of his garment, his clothing, I shall be made whole. So what's the first thing she did? She said. Everybody say number one. one. Say it. Say. Come on, everybody say it. Say, say it. Say. All right. Here's what the Lord said to Brother Hagin. Positive or negative? It is up to the individual according to what they say they shall receive. We all probably know that. Or have heard that. Jesus said she could have said... There's no use for me. She could have said, I suffered a long time, 12 years. She could have said, I've had all the best doctors and they've given up on me. She could have said, I'm broke and I spent everything on doctors. I'm no better. I'm actually worse. She could have said, I have nothing to live for. She could have said, I might as well just give up and die. And if she would have said that, that's what she would have got. But she didn't say that. Proverbs 6.2 says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, or you're taken captive with your words. So if you talk about your... Tri See, when this thing happened, the Lord said, Don't focus on the negative. Stay on the positive. And he said, Chip, I want you to preach the truth. Right? And you know what the gospel is also translated? Good news. Focus on the good news. Guess what we were hearing for a long time? Bad news? I got so, uh, man, hey, they're going to cancel. NBA's going to cancel. NHL's canceling. Hey, Major League Baseball canceling. Hey, your team's not going to play. It's canceled. Hey, you're canceled. Ah! <laughs> I just wanted somebody. I wanted Burger King to say, we're open just one day. <laughs> Did anybody else get that way? I mean, when this thing started, ah! just somebody give me some good news. I was craving good news, and I couldn't get it. And the Lord said to me, that's how an unbeliever, feel, an, an unbeliever feels every day of his life. Because the gospel, the truth, is the good news. And I said, God, I do have good news. Yes, the gospel. He said, stay focused there. Sit, get off the social media. He told me, get off of that watching that negative thing. If your faith isn't there, it will shrivel up your faith. That, that continual of bad news will shrivel up your faith and it'll die. There is such a thing as dead faith. And I, he said, stay focused on the good news. What does the word say? Hey, they said this. What does the word say? 
Because God's got people that are going to go by what the word says. Is there any of those people in here? Oh, glory to God. All right, are y'all okay? Jesus said it's time to write your own ticket. She said this. Now, if you talk about... If you think about this, and you talk about your trials and your obstacles, and you talk about what the devil's doing, and you talk about your, your face going to shrivel up and die. But on the other hand, if you talk about the Word of God and the truth, your face is going to grow abundantly. The Lord said to me one time, stop talking to me about your problems and start talking to your problems about me. That ain't a bad idea, is it? And so, anyway, step one. What is it? Say it. Everybody, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. That's how you got born again. Right? You spoke it. All right. Step two. And Nike didn't come up with this. Just do it. Well, this is pretty simple stuff. If it isn't simple and precise, it's not from God. I can tell you that right now. It's just the truth. Okay. Step two is do it. Well, the woman with the issue of blood, if you think about it. She, now, everybody listen to me. This is so important. She did not pray to God to remove the obstacles. Isn't that interesting? She did not pray to God to remove the obstacle. She said what she was going to do. And then she did it. Walked on top of them, walked over them, walked through them, and did it. Amen? What were her obstacles? Well, number one, her religion. And the religion part of it said, you're sick. You're like a leper. You can't mingle with the crowd. She was not supposed to. No! But you know what she said? Religion or no religion, I'm touching the hymn and I'm getting my wholeness. Not just healing, wholeness. Number two obstacle she had was custom. Not just if she was sick, she was a woman. They weren't even supposed to be mingling in that crowd. She said, custom or no custom, I'm touching the hem of his garment and getting my healing. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And then number three was the crowd. Think about it. And the disciples couldn't believe how she, you know, what she did, and it was just all pressed together. But crowd or no crowd, she did it. Jesus said, your actions either defeat you or they put you over. Your actions will defeat you or put you over. So according to your actions, you receive or you are kept from receiving. God said to me, never underestimate the power of your next reaction or your next words because they can dictate. They can dictate the momentum. They can dictate the direction. They can dictate the course. They can dictate the, which train you're on, which direction you're going. If you're going towards God in his plan or away from God in his plan, your words and your reaction. Woo. It's very important. So she's writing her own ticket. And it worked for her and it will work for us. Everybody step, say step one. Step one. What is it? Say. Step two. Do it. Do it. Step three is re receive it. Say receive it. receive it. Her third step was verse 29. She felt her body that she was healed. Jesus said power has gone out of me. Somebody touch me. <laughs> now notice that the feeling and the healing followed the coming and the doing. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Come on now, don't let me lose you here. Most people want the feeling and the healing first, but it doesn't work that way. And at that time, if you think about it, the only power present that represented the Godhead on earth at that time was Jesus. If you wanted the power of God, you had to find Jesus. If you wanted the power of God and you needed it in your life, you had to either, one, find his itinerary or find somebody who had a shirt Look on the back of it, one of those concert date shirts. <laughs> it's going to be in Nazareth, November. <laughs> Sweet. Does any old rockers know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the only way you get that shirt is you go into the concert, man. <clears throat> so that was the only power of God representative of the Godhead at that time. 
And we know this because Jesus teaching to the Pharisees and the doctors from all the Galilee. He said the power was present to heal them. And remember Jesus de delegated the power to the 12. He delegated power to the 70. But before Jesus went away, he said this. It would be expedient for me, for you, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comforter will not come to you. So what happened? When Jesus returned to heaven, he sent the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, to this earth. And now it's changed. And now the Holy Spirit is here. And he is the only representative of the power of the Godhead of the Trinity on earth. Are y'all with me? The Holy Spirit. So the power today is always present everywhere. Wherever the Spirit is, there's power. If there's a believer, there's the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Glory to God. So power to what? Heal, deliver, set free, anything you need. But it's like plugging it in, plugging it into a wall socket. And Jesus said to Brother Hagin, I said to that woman, Daughter, thy faith, whose faith? Her faith has made thee whole. So her faith was the secret, was the plug-in to receiving from God. And it was her faith that caused the power to flow out of her. And Jesus said, power is everywhere present. Everywhere. Power to deliver from sickness, from disease, from, from demons, from anything. And Jesus said, faith gives it action. Now, I remember one... I don't know if I ever told it here, but I had a, a, a vision myself. I had one, and it was an out-of-body, and I'll try to tell the very quick story. And he takes me to this football field where I played. We're there. There's a huddle, offense, defense. I could smell the popcorn. I could see conversations in the crowd. And uh, I don't know why I'm there. He first told me before he took me there. I said, Lord, I receive your benefits. And he said, that's where my people are missing it. They just receive. They're to be a receiver. And then I saw ER go on the end of the word receiver. ER, extra responsibility. So we're at this game. And the offense breaks the huddle, and there I am. Guess what position I played? Receiver. And so that's what I played in high school and college. And so there I was. And I'm watching myself hoping I played a good game because here we are watching. It. <laughs> and so I'm watching myself knowing I have no clue why I'm there. But I'm there. And I go out for a pass and, and, and make a cut. And the guy slips and falls. And the quarterback sees me, throws the, the, the pass. I catch it. The crowd, you know, turn. So all I got to do is turn up and go up field. <clears throat> and I don't do it. I just lay down. So in, foot, in high school, once you lay down, play's over. No contact needed. So I just lay down. And the crowd's booing. And everybody's booing. I'm booing. <laughs> saying this ain't me you must have got Nate's film or something because <laughs> I never did this I didn't say that so I now here's what he was I, here's what it was crazy about this whole vision I come back like what's the big deal I, I did my job and the quarterback grabs me and says what are you doing and I'm up above watching this and the quarterback says what are you doing I said Back off, man. I did my job. I received the pass. And the quarterback grabs me and says, no, you're to be a receiver. You have extra responsibilities. You're to run your race. You're to use your faith. You're to speak it. You're to receive it. And you're to run with it. Run down the... All of a sudden, this quarterback turns into like a preacher, right? Run your race down the field because the goal line is your manifestation. The goal line is your ministry, is your calling, is your healing. The goal line, you're on this field. Now run. When you pray, that's when the answer's sent. When you pray, that's when you receive. Remember the angels in, in Daniel? Your words were heard the first day. We're here 19 days later. Maybe he was on the 19-yard line. Whatever. Are y'all with me? But that's what it took. So when he prayed his words, and now he's got to, he gets to use his faith, his actions. Get down the field. And then I'm getting all excited about this revelation. 
The Lord says, come with me. So we go from this 20-yard line all the way down here. And he says, look. And I look down, and it was no longer football players. It was people that looked just like this. And they were laying at the one-yard line. One yard away. One yard from their calling. One yard from their healing. One yard from their miracle. That close. I said, Lord, why don't they just get up and get over? He said, it got too tough. They quit. But don't they know where they're at? He said, they don't even know where they're at. And so two weeks go by. I'm trying to tell everybody in the world, I'm not a preacher. I'm still coaching. you got to get off the goal line and get over it. I mean, you have a vision like this. That's how you're going to act. And then a situation happened to us, and the Lord told us what to do. And he says, now you know you're at the goal line. He says, when it gets tougher, what happens? That defense gets tougher. The goal line defense gets tougher. It's just the same way with the enemy. He knows knows you're close to your breakthrough. When that pressure gets harder, you know you're close. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, that's not the time to lay down. He said, that's the actual time to rejoice. Because rejoicing is the highest type of faith. But so many people have laid down and quit right there at what I had for them. To rejoice. Man. Glory to God. Because that is where the breakthrough is. I remember one time I was in London, England preaching. And I told that story and they said, you must have read all history books. I said, I haven't even read much of our history books <laughs> at that time. And so they said, the guy who, who attempted to, to swim the English Channel for the first time, y'all can Google this, don't do it now, wait till after church. <laughs> and I'm, I'm right there preaching where it was at. And uh, he, t- he rings a bell and he's telling everybody, uh, meet me out there, I'm going to swim the English Channel. And they're all called, you're a fool, whatever. Well, they go there to see him die, right? So they're on both banks to watch him. They got a rowboat by him, and he's swimming, and he's taking off, and he's, man, he's, he's going to do it. There's no, I mean, he's like speeding up. This, this dude's going to do it. A lot of Christians this way, too, when they start out. Come on. He's gaining momentum. He can see. All of a sudden, a fog moves in. I don't know if you've ever heard of a London fog, but you can't even. They're, they're so thick. Can't see. And then a wind blows, and this is a true story. And, it, and the storm comes in, and the waves get big, and he can't see where he's at. And, and, and he's fighting, and he's fighting, and it's fighting. It's getting tougher and tougher and tougher. Finally, he puts his hand on the boat. They help him up. They start to row the boat, and hit the shore. They were 50 meters from the shore. Now, the, here's the thing if they could have asked him, if you would have known where you were at, No matter the storm, no matter anything else, would you have quit? Are y'all with me? So when the pressure's the toughest, you now know. Come on, somebody get that. And that's not the time to lay down. God's people, I have people not laying down. Not when it gets tough, pandemic. Got all these rules. Can't do this, cancel that. That's not the time to lay down. That's the time to rejoice. That's the time to arise up. Because I've got people in this city. Amen. And people who know how to write their own ticket. Because I need them to write their own ticket. Because not just for them, but for the people who are watching them at work. The people who are watching them in their families or the neighborhoods. I need them to say it. These are spiritual laws. I need them to do it. And I need them to receive it. Amen? Amen. And so you think about it. Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, everybody. (laughs) Now, have you ever thought about this? The reasons why people touched him that day? How How about curiosity or accidentally? How about this one? How about this one? Kind of reminds me of some church people. It used to be me. Just to see what would happen. Don't you think that probably happened? Because his fame spread about Galilee. 
I'm going to touch him. You're going to touch him? I dare you. I'm going to touch him. <laughs> I'm touching him. You're not going to. I'm down. Hey, he said he's going to touch him. <laughs> Climb up the tree and see if he touches him. Climb up. I dare you. You're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. Come out of, out, of, out of the Lord to him. Sometimes I think Christians go to church just to see what would happen. Or just curiosity. Are y'all with me? Instead of, instead of, but one little receiver came through the crowd. Are y'all with me? Are y'all just, And she's getting what she came. Sometimes you got to get that uh-huh. Kenneth Copeland bulldog. <laughs> and you're, what, what other excuses are you going to use? Jesus said, anybody, anywhere, anytime can receive this. How come you don't have your healing? Like, get it. Amen. Get it. It's available. He has won every battle for us. The train's been, the track's been laid. Get it. How come you're still in poverty? Get it. What are you saying? What are you doing? Are y'all with me? Come on, we need to remind it. Somebody tell me we need to remind it of this if we already knew it. Or we need this. It is very simple. Basics 101. Fundamentals every champion coach knows don't get away from them. You cannot get away from this. I want a deeper revelation. Cannot get away from this. We've got to know this. We are his people. And the momentum is going to shift in this war. Satan thinks he's doing good. Uh Uh-uh. It's about to shift. It's shifting now. It's already shifting. Well, if the church don't do this, we're going to do it. I'm tired of hearing prophets tell them if the church don't. We're going to do it. We are doing it. God said if I can find one, just one. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm getting pumped up. Are y'all okay? Yeah. All right, you don't mind being coached a little bit. So glory to God. If you just think about that. Power didn't flow out of him until the receiver came along. Now think about Brother Hagin's testimony as I wrap this up. 1934, he's a young boy. And he was 16 months bed fast. Now, we've been quarantined or whatever you want to call it for how many months now? Six or whatever. 16 months in the same bed. That's terrible. He had what? Uh, Incurable blood disease. Deformed heart. And paralysis. Bless his heart. And I mean that. 16 months he can't move. He's paralyzed. He's a young boy. He's praying every day of those 16 months. What kind of God? Now y'all are waiting for lightning to strike. What kind of God would do that to a boy? Make him wait 16 months. To get his healing. Incurable blood disease. Deformed heart. Evidently it's not incurable. He was healed of it. What happened? What happened? He gets a hold of Mark 11, 23 and 24. And the Lord shows him about writing his own ticket. If you say it, believe it. You do it. Wrote his own ticket. And he felt it just like that lady felt it. He wrote the ticket, not God. God had the train and the tracks waiting. He wrote the ticket. Are y'all with me? You write the ticket. Quit waiting for God to write the ticket. He's done everything he's ever going to do about healing you. He's already done it. Well, you're saying he ain't going to heal me? No, I didn't say that. 
He's done everything he's ever going to do about it. Prosperity and everything else. He's done everything. Why would he have to do something he's already done? Are y'all with me or not? So 16 months, and then he gets it, right? And he says this. Why? He, 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 he asks this. He goes, do you think God sent the healing power to heal me on that day I got healed? Just on that day. No, it was there the whole 16 months. Are y'all with me? It just didn't come down to heal him on that day. It was available the whole 16 months. How many years are you going by? It's been available there the whole time. This is good news, by the way. If there's a little conviction, good. Not condemnation to those who are in Christ. But good. You can start today. You can start writing your ticket today. Maybe you started it and then you tore it up. Maybe you got off the train, whatever the situation may be. But God needs his people to what? Write their tickets. And that's my glorious church. And that's the church that's arising and shining during this time. This is a time for opportunity. The very first day that that happened, I heard this uh, Japanese girl say, in our language, the word for crisis is made up of two two words. It means danger, but it also means opportunity. So the word crisis in their language means it, it is a dangerous time, but for great opportunity. Are y'all with me? We've reached, and I know this church has too, we've reached more people during this time. Over the internet, over different things, things are happening and they're going to continue to happen. Amen? You want to know why? Because God's got people. Say, I'm his people. Then his people are doing something. His people are doing something. You just can't sit there and say, I'm his people. Yeah, you're going to heaven, but don't do anything. So, glory to God. Got to keep the switch of faith turned on. Brother Hagin said, many have died waiting for their healing or their prosperity to come. Saying, I believe God is going to heal me sometime. I believe God's going to do this for me sometime. And he says, that's unscriptural, by the way. That statement contains zero faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? God sent Jesus 2,000 years ago, and he laid your sickness and your disease on Jesus. And he bore them for you. Amen? Glory to God. Everybody say step four. four. What's step one? Step two. Step three. Man, y'all are good. We may cut out conditioning at the end of this thing. Right now, we're still going to have it. But if I see a little effort out of y'all, step four is tell it. Go tell it to others so that they can believe. This is why he needs his people to write their own ticket. The difference in step one, say it, and four is say what you believe will happen. Step four is tell what happened. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I'm not going to lie to you as I'm wrapping this up. It's not going to be no better roses. The enemy's always going to come and try to tempt you to get you off that train. He's going to try to have you tear up that ticket. All of these things are going to come. But if you write your own ticket, you're going to have whatever you need during these last times. And I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but God created me in this plan, in his sovereign plan, for me to be healed and whole and serve the fullness of my days Doing his plan that he's called me to do. And that's not broke and that's not sick and that's not in pain. That's what I believe. Amen? Y'all believe that or not? What kind of God is he? Well, it wasn't a God making that boy wait. It was there the whole time. He ain't making you wait. It's there the whole time. Isn't that good news? Say, I'm writing my ticket. ticket. What about David when he went up against Goliath? 
How about that? Did he write? Yeah. He said it actually five times to make sure. And Goliath cursed David by his heathen gods, and David let him talk, and then, and then you know, you can't keep the devil from talking and lying, and when he shuts up, you got something to say. And so David had something to say. And when he said it, I love this, guys. You want to talk about a revelation. This, and, and I know I've said it here, but you need to hear it again. Because it's talking about the fourth step. What's the fourth step? Tell Say it again. Tell it. Tell it. Your testimony's powerful. You overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. We do not need to be. Remember what he told Paul? Don't stop. You are speaking spirits. Tell it. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it. Now think about David. And so David, watch the five steps that he did. You can go back and read it. You talk about tell it. Watch what he did. Now, the Lord said to me as I was talking to my best friend Rocky on the phone, and we're talking about David and Goliath, and and I was telling him about David talking trash, and I thought that was cool. Trash talking is scriptural. Not to your neighbor, are you all with me? Not to your wife, but to your mountain. And he's talking trash. This is trash talk 101. If y'all never played sports, trash talking is when you're going up to your opponent, you know, whether before the game or during the play or whatever, and you're going to say what you're going to do. And, and if you don't back it up, man, that's, you need to shut up. <laughs> Rookie. And you know what? When I was a coach, I didn't mind trash talking when I knew the guys could back it a little bit. I would go, hey, hey, hey. (laughs) The hey, hey, hey was for the parents and everybody else up in the stand. (laughs) Hey, we don't do that. (laughs) I did that, man. I loved it. Because only to those guys who knew they were going to grit their teeth and do it. Don't just be a hearer. Write your own ticket. Amen? Amen. Yeah, but I got obstacles, Chip. So what? Go over the top of them. Don't sit and pray and wait for those things to to be removed. She didn't. Amen? Amen. This is good news. We're going to start winning. Undefeated. Seated and undefeated. I like that song. And so the Lord said to me, you want to know why David, the story of David and Goliath is the most popular story to the world that's in the Bible. I didn't say in the church. Are you all with me? I need your heads to do something. So the most popular story as far as the Bible is concerned to the world is what? Yeah. Because it's the only one that the sports analysts use, right? They don't use this team is the Pharaoh and this team seems to be (laughs) Moses. What are you talking about, Bob? Well, you know, when Moses, they came out of it, you know, out of Egypt. Back to you. But what do they use? To this day, everybody knows about it. You want to know why? Because he told it. He told it. And the Lord said, you want to know why? And I said, yeah, I want to know why. And he goes, well, read it and see what he did. And he did these five steps. And the very last thing he did. I remember one time I was preaching at a minister's conference in L.A. And there were hundreds, about 500 ministers were there. So we had this big catered meal. And this one waitress looked like she had a hard life. You could just kind of tell, just, you know, piercings and tattoos, which we don't judge. I'm not into that. Don't, Don't send me emails or stuff. I'm just, they were, and they were talking to her, trying to lead her to the Lord, and they found out that she had never stepped foot in church, never went to Sunday school, never read the Bible, never opened the Bible, never been prayed for, never prayed, never, 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 no, no, no. They go, Chip, we got one for you. <laughs> so they sent her down to me. I said, really? Yeah, never, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I said, well, have you ever heard of David and Goliath? She goes, that's, of course, that's where the little guy beats the giant. How? 
Nobody, how? So I went back and I read it, and the Lord said, here's why. Because he told it. Because he wrote his own ticket, and then he told it. And he said, I'm going to smite you. I'm going to cut your head off. That's trash talk. I'm going to feed you to the birds. Remember that? And then watch what he said. The very last words before Goliath's hairy ears heard it. His last words that he heard on this earth. David said, and the whole earth will know. There is a God. Not, there is a Chip Brim ministry, there's a David Ministries. Are y'all with me? No, there's a God in Israel. Woo! Guess what? Here's my translation of that, what just happened right there. You can read it out of the Amplified, whatever you want to do, but here's the Chip Brim translation. And in 2020, in Vacation Bible School, in Alma, Arkansas, that's a little blank where you fill out where you're at. <laughs> there will be little kids learning about this battle and me defeating you, cutting your head off. And they're going to color pictures of it. And their parents are going to put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> and Goliath's last words are, refrigerator. <laughs> That's my translation. <laughs> I'm going to ask David when we get to heaven, what's his last word for refrigerator? <laughs> Amen. Are y'all okay? Did, has that impacted people? Yes, all these years. Why? Because words are spiritual laws. And it doesn't matter about your circumstance or not. Spiritual laws work. They'll work for the unbeliever. There are sp spiritual laws that God put into existence. that it doesn't, They don't go around caring if they're a believer or not. Let's just see if one of his natural laws cares if you're a believer or not. Let's go to the highest building in Alma. That would have to be a silo probably or the water tower. <laughs> Normally when I'm in New York, we could say a certain building or something. But in Alma, it's going to be what? Really? The football press box is the highest? Even in the water tower? Okay, we have a... <laughs> I've got one of those, blow, those, those, those speakers. Hey, Bob. Get the believer and the unbeliever. Got them? Okay. Test one. Okay, push the unbeliever off. We're going to check gravity to see if it works. Oh, it worked. Didn't care if it was a believer. Okay, you got the believer? No, no. Yeah, yeah, push the believer off. Barring a miracle, right? Gravity's going to work. Well, that's the same thing for spiritual laws and your words. So what are you saying? What are you doing? Are you receiving it? Receive it. Can't have that past mind, man. And then run and tell it. Amen? And, and if, 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 if it seems to be bigger than you, if the doctor's report seems to be bigger than you, if the, if the debt seems to be bigger, if the pain seems to be bigger, don't measure that. You can. You can come. You can start whenever you want with the music. Don't measure that to you. But do what David did because everybody was talking about how big Goliath was and his giant, 11, 9 foot, whatever he was. And everybody was afraid of how big he was. But David wasn't measuring him against him. He was measuring him against him. Amen? And he helped me deliver the lion and the bear. 
He took me from a shepherd to a king. You're going to have to fight him. Last little story, I promise. But you know what that reminds me of? When I was first coaching high school, some of my teaching job was elementary PE. I loved it. Those little kids, little girls with ponytails, pigtails, and the little guys coming in all, you know, second, third, fourth grade. Think they're everything. And so I'd have them all sit down, had a real military. They all had their spots they couldn't talk, you know. It's Coach Brim. But I wanted to have fun too. I'm just out of, I'm just out of playing ball myself. And I'm young. I said, we're going to play a lot of dodgeball in my class. All the boys like, yeah. The girls, you know, they don't really care. So I said, headshots are, ova- I mean, there, there's no rules here. And this is back in the day when we could do this, okay? So don't try to sue me. Here are the rules. Boys versus girls. Yeah! Woo! Y'all remember. Boys versus girls. Nobody does that. Coach Brim is cool. He said, here's the other rule. I'm on the girl side. I'm telling you, I'm like 25 years old. I can throw about 95 miles an hour. I got the girls on the side of the court. I said, girls, just go over in that corner. Talk amongst yourselves. What you're going to do at recess. Trade what you're going to trade at lunch. Pudding for, yeah, whatever. I got it covered. Game on. Boom. And I'm catching like three balls. Wham, 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 wham. And they lose, right? And the girl's like, we win, yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> later I find out that the girls brag about it at recess. The boys just, ugh. <laughs> and then later, you know, later on, hey, it's dodgeball day. And the boys, oh. <laughs> and the girls are like, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying all that to say, The girls didn't look at the boys. Are y'all with me? They look, Coach Brown. It's the same way. What is it, a doctor's report? What is it, a debt? What is it? I don't care if it's a million-dollar debt. I don't care. God's bigger, and greater is he who is in you. Because if you're a believer, then that power is there. They had to find Jesus in the old days. But the power is everywhere. And he needs his church during this time, amen, to be writing tickets right and left. Amen. Anybody get anything out of that? It's a good reminder. I'm not saying, I know you've heard this this if you go to church here. But man, we got to hear this. Because he said, this is what I need my people to do. I said, yes, sir. And my sensitivity, that's what I want. Kind of in the back of my mind, I wanted something, revelation that's never been told before, that Nate never thought of. (laughs) You know what I mean? Just natural human thinking. But the Lord said, no, this is what I need. You ask me what I need. Now, remember, God needs no harm in attack. Amen. So, I don't know if anybody come and you're not born again. I just want to say this. I say it every time. Everybody who's come to my camps know. Jesse DePlantis had that when he was taken to heaven. And God said to him, my saddest moment has not yet come. For it will be the day of judgment. And he said, on that day, there will be people who I loved and sent my son for who never made that decision, who never came in covenant with me. And actually, the words he used was, he didn't say because they weren't saved. You know what he said? 
He said, I never knew them. Partner. I never knew them. There was no fellowship. There was no relation. I never knew them. And on that day, and you know, that, that changed my whole outlook of the day I go to heaven because I've got a plan. And my plan is to chest bump Jesus. So you know he's going to get some major ups, right? So I'm going to have to work out even in my older age. But, but I'm going to have a glorified body, so I'm, I'm sure we're going to really get high. You can look at that and judge it all you want. But Jesus knows the desires of our heart. And I am chest bumping Jesus. Now, I'm going to chest bump my dad, who's been there for a long time, short time for him. It's going to be a great time. But then when I heard that from Jesse, and he's crying, we're in a van in Branson. We're just like shopping. And he's telling the story, and he's just crying. Because it's not because it was just so real. And, man, it moved me. And I thought, what if we're there? Um, what if this happens, Jesse? And now I'm going to make it more real here. What if that day I see somebody that I saw in Alma on that Sunday morning? And I make eye contact with them on that day. And I didn't even give them the opportunity to put their name in that book and to solidify their eternity. And not have to go to hell. What if they look at me and go, why didn't you? Why didn't you? I'm sorry. Well, it's not just me, a preacher on Sunday. It's you with your people at work. Are y'all with me? It's your neighbors. It's your family. So I'm not saying cram, cram it down their throats. I'm saying start writing your tickets. And they're going to see God in you. They're going to notice the power. They're going to see the healings. They're going to see, how is this happening at this time? Tell me. And then you'll tell them. That's step four. Are y'all with me? Do y'all see why this is important? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Chip, I don't, I've never said that prayer. I don't, know, I don't know if my name is in that book, but I want to make sure it's in that book. Raise your hand, and I'll say a prayer with you. I want to make sure. I don't want to go. I don't want, to, I don't want that time, and you look at me, and I look at you, and I don't know if my name's in that book. I don't want to take that chance. I'm raising my hand. Say a prayer with me, and we'll make sure of it right now. We will seal it for eternity. It'll never change from this moment on. And you want to make that decision. Raise that hand boldly. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody. Never too late. All right, well, everybody look up. Here's the good news. We're all going to heaven. And remember what Jesus said? You want to rejoice? He said, don't rejoice about casting out demons. I'll give you something to rejoice about. Your name is written in that book. Now, that's something to rejoice about. Amen? We're going to continue to how to write your own ticket, not just the, I gave you the four, but what else God wanted that we needed tonight. So don't miss it. It's, it's very important. It'll impact your life. Amen? Pastor, come on up. Glory to God. Stay down here. <laughs> All right, stay down there. 6.30 tonight. Uh, 6.30 tonight. Uh, man, aren't you blessed to have... I love that. You're funny to listen to, look at, and everything else. So, I, I mean, no, wonderful. Uh, 6.30 tonight, and uh, just thankful. Thankful for God, God relationships and uh, in the church. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you at 6.30 tonight.